Hi, this is Tom Moore with AWS. Today we're going to talk about using Amazon Transcribe from your .NET Core web applications. In this video, we're going to do the following. First, we'll have a look at Amazon Transcribe in the AWS console and see how we can use the service manually. We'll then have a look at how to call the service from your custom .NET Core code. We'll demonstrate the code in my custom application. And finally, we'll have a look at the API documentation for this service on our website. But first off, what is Amazon Transcribe? Amazon Transcribe is a service that calls a deep learning process called Automatic Speech Recognition, or ASR, to convert speech to text quickly and accurately. Amazon Transcribe converts the audio track from audio files or movies to text automatically. There's also a version of the Transcribe service called Amazon Transcribe Medical, which can be used to perform speech to text for clinical documentation purposes. Amazon Transcribe makes it easy for developers to add speech to text capabilities into their applications. And because Amazon Transcribe is a fully managed service, there's no back-end infrastructure to set up, and you pay only for what you use. Some examples of the use cases for Amazon Transcribe are, call centers can use Transcribe to convert audio recordings of phone calls to text. This can then be used for call analytics, sentiment analysis, and coaching purposes. If you have a catalog of audio media files, you can use Transcribe to create a searchable index for your content. Or, you can use Transcribe to create captions and subtitles for your video content. Let's see a quick demo of Transcribe in the AWS console. Here we are in the AWS console. We're going to have a look at how to use Amazon Transcribe to manually convert an audio file to text. To start with, I have an audio file here that I recorded earlier and has some of my introduction to this video. As you can see here, I've uploaded the file to my Amazon Simple Storage Service bucket. From here, I'm going to navigate to the Amazon Transcribe service. Amazon Transcribe allows me to create a transcription job here by clicking this button. I need to give the transcription job a name, so I'm going to call it Sample Transcription. The next thing I need to do is tell Transcribe where to find my file. So I'm going to use the Browse button. I'm going to select my bucket and the sample file. For this demonstration, I'm going to accept the default of using the Service Managed Bucket. There's a number of extended options on this page, but I'm going to leave these all disabled. And then I'm going to click Create. My transcription job will be kicked off and now I just need to wait for it to complete. Once my job is complete, I can click into the job and look at the details. Because I've used the service managed bucket, I can see the output text here. At the bottom of the screen is an application integration section that can show me some of the code necessary in my application to start using Transcribe as well as the API result that we get back. Now let's have a look at what we need to do to do this in our sample application. The workflow for my application works like this. I will have an audio or a video file that has been uploaded into Amazon X3. My application is then going to call Transcribe's Start Transcription Jobs asynchronous method to kick off a transcription job. We'll then have to wait for the transcription job to finish processing the file. In my application, I'll simply wait for the transcription to finish, but in a production application, you'll want a more robust solution because the transcription can take several minutes depending on the length of the media file you are uploading. Once the transcription of the input file is done, the results are delivered to S3 for storage. You can choose to use either your custom bucket or a bucket controlled by the service. In my application, I'll have the results written back to my own S3 bucket. 
Finally, when the transcription has been completed and I've got the results, my application will retrieve the transcription results from S3, parse the resulting data, and display the results on a web form. Let's have a look at the code in Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2019 Professional, but our SDKs can be used in earlier versions of Visual Studio as well. My application is set up using the .NET Core MVC application template. I'm going to assume that you already know how to create an MVC application, so I won't go over that process in this video. For my application to work, I need to add the AWS SDKs to my project for services that I'm calling. I do this via NuGet. As you can see here, I've added the following components. AWS SDK.core, AWS SDK.DynamoDB allows me to store my metadata in DynamoDB. Since I'm going to be uploading files to S3, I need to add the AWS SDK to S3. And finally, in order to call the transcribe service, I'm going to have to call I'm going to have to add the AWS SDK dot transcribe service components to my project. Since my application allows the user to upload a file through the web form, I've encoded the logic to store those files into S3 and the metadata in DynamoDB in an upload controller. The Amazon S3 SDK includes a file transfer utility that takes care of the heavy lifting of transferring files for you. Once that upload has been completed, the DynamoDB client allows me to store that data into my table. From there, I'm going to pass control over to the transcribe controller in my application. In order to use the transcribe service, my application needs credentials. I'm going to use the AWS SDK in order to retrieve a set of credentials from my shared credentials file. I do this using a profile name that I've stored in my configuration file. Once I've done that, I'm going to load my transcription web page and then call Amazon Transcribe through an AJAX call. In the AJAX call, I once again use the DynamoDB client to retrieve the values for the file that I've stored. I'm going to retrieve the S3 path for the file as well as the input bucket. Once I've done this, I can use the Amazon Transcribe service client to create a start transcription job request. I need to pass it a job name the language code that the file is using, in this case, US English. I need to pass it the metadata file location in S3, and then the bucket that I, where I want transcribe to store the output for its call. In this case, I'm going to use the same bucket that I use to store the file. I then call the start transcription job async method from the SDK. Once a transcription job has been created, I can call get transcription job async to retrieve the status of that job and monitor that until the job has been completed. Now, in my application, because it's a sample application, I'm simply going to loop through and wait for the transcription job to complete. Once that's done, I'm going to retrieve the output file from S3, once again using the Amazon S3 client. I'll pass it the bucket location for the, for the file where I've told it to store the output. And the actual file name is going to be the input job name with a JSON file extension. I'm going to retrieve the file using the getObjectRequest method from the Amazon S3 SDK, and then read the file data in. Now for my output form, all I'm concerned about is the transcription data. So I'm simply going to retrieve that data from the output file. 
and then pass that to my form. You can see here the format of the data as it's returned from the service. I have the job name, which is what I've passed the, the data, the account ID, the transcription, and a bunch of items that, that go through possible changes to the transcription based on the, the data and pronunciation. Once I've done that, I'm going to return to the form and display the text. Now let's have a look at the code in action. I've already uploaded my sample recording through the for web form. Using DynamoDB, I'm able to retrieve the values, which reference the input URL for my file, as well as the bucket that, where the file has been stored. I'm going to create my file transcription request, which includes the job name, the language code, the media file URL, which I've retrieved from the metadata table in S3 in DynamoDB, as well as the S3 input bucket. And now I'm going to create the file transcription request. In my loop, I'm going to get the details of the file and wait till it's been completed. Now that it's been completed, I'm going to use the Amazon S3 client to retrieve the file details, to retrieve the output. I use a stream reader to get the contents of the object, and now I'm going to retrieve the text for my transcription. You can see here on my form, here is the data that has been retrieved, and it's the transcription of my audio from my introduction to this video. Full documentation about Amazon Transcribe and the APIs can be found on our website. Let's have a look. In the sample application, we use the Amazon Transcribe Service Client class in order to kick off the transcription job. and to monitor the progress of that job while the file was being processed. The Amazon Transcription Job class contained the details necessary for Transcribe to find my file in Amazon S3 and do the processing of it. And the Get Transcription Job request was used by the Amazon Transcribe service client to monitor for the changes in the transcription job and let us know when things were completed. Hopefully this is helpful in helping you to use Transcribe in your applications. Thank you.